so yeah, let's have a look at this then. So this is a PS5 power supply. If this does make a video, I'm going to say one thing right now. Please do not try this at home unless you're experienced and confident because power supplies are incredibly dangerous. Um, and I'm not going to take responsibility. This is not a repair guide. Consider this entertainment only and do not take my word for anything in this video. This is purely for entertainment. So this is a PS5 power supply that I've just pulled out of a customer's console that has gone bad. And yeah, I do hear the fees on this. The customer's console, I do suspect, may have possibly been dropped, given the fact that the case just fell off in my hand. But that could have happened in shipping, even though it was well packaged. But also the heatsink, which I haven't put back together yet, but the heatsink was also damaged. So it could well have had an impact, um, so anything could have happened to this. But Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. As the industry leader in custom PCB manufacturing, PCBWay is the only solution you'll ever need for all your engineering projects. With affordable custom PCBs, flexible PCBs, CNC and 3D printing, you can get your project off the ground today. With the PCBWay store, you can purchase development boards, tools and everything you'll need to get started. Prices are competitive and the possibilities are endless. From multimeters to microchips, PCBWay have it all. And if you're struggling for inspiration, you can find pre-made projects by like-minded engineers. To learn more about the PCBWay store, shared projects, or any of PCBWay's services, head to the video description where you'll find links to the great products and services that PCBWay offer. Now let's get back to the repair. If we take a look at my power supply here, or rather my bench, bench uh, multimeter, if we take a look at that, we're not getting no output on that 12 volt line at all. So we're supposed to get 12 volt out of these prongs. I can flip the lead around. We're not getting 12 volt there as well. Absolutely nothing. So we're getting no output voltage at all on this. Now the beautiful folks at consolefix.shop have supplied me with some replacement power management chips and some replacement optocouplers because they're the main things that go. Uh, so they are very, very kind over at consolefix.shop. The coder is in no way affiliated with consolefix.shop, but I do highly recommend checking out consolefix.shop because consolefix.shop is the way to go. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, it is my online store, but you can buy those parts on that store. And I do have them in stock. I've got about 250 of those optocouplers. In fact, I've got exactly 250 of those optocouplers because they got delivered a couple of days ago. But they usually fail at the same time as the power supply, as the... Uh, the DAPO 53 chip. The chip I'm using is an alternative part, but or rather the chip I use and sell is an alternative part, but it is pin for pin compatible. I sell those for, I think they're 16.95, and I can't remember how much I've, exact, off the top of my head, how much I've put the uh, optical couplers on for, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna start creating some packs so, like, three optocouplers plus a DAP chip um, for a little bit cheaper, I think. Best way to get your store business, indeed. Right, so let's try and pry this open. But like I said, don't take my word for anything in this video because I'm not a power supply engineer or a power supply technician. I have absolutely no qualifications. This is purely for entertainment to see if I get zapped. But on a serious note, power supplies can kill. And I'm not even joking. Power supplies can literally kill you. They carry very high voltage, very high current. These power supplies in particular, I've just damaged the case on this one. So I'll have to change the case on this if I do fix it. I don't have a pro tool to hand. But I'll change the case on this one if I uh, fix it. Pop. But yeah, uh, power supplies carry very high voltage and very high current. This power supply in particular carries 31 amps at full load and um, we run on 240 volts in the UK or more specifically that that socket there is putting out 244 volts so they are very dangerous they are not safe to work on unless you're experienced and I am not going to give any advice on fixing them I'm just going to document this repair if I can fix it I can fix it and if I can't then well, so be it. 
I'm not going to read chat. Um, if you are watching this back of the video, by the way, and I'll respond to anyone, it's because I'm live streaming over on Twitch. Um, I'm not going to read chat right now because, well, to be quite honest with you, I don't fancy a high voltage pacemaker. Okay? I do not fancy a high voltage pacemaker. And <laughs> that's ultimately what this is going to be. So I unplugged this about, what, five minutes ago now? I unplugged this. I'm going to yeet this case. Yeet, motherfucker! I unplugged this about ten minutes ago. Let's see if there's any charge in the caps. About five minutes ago, sorry, not ten minutes ago. But let's just see if there's any charge in the caps. Hold it by the edge. If you hold it by the edge, then you reduce the chances of you getting zapped. So I'm in voltage mode right now, DC voltage. Three hundred and twenty five volts. And that's been unplugged for five minutes. Three hundred and twenty five volts. Fifty K. Yep, there we go. Right, what is my voltage now? So it's been quite a while now since I actually unplugged this. But it looks like... Oh, shit. Whoops. Well, now it's probably got no voltage in it. Ha! <laughs> that weren't meant to happen, was it? See? That's what happens when you got metal on your desk. Still 282 volts. He doesn't read chat much on Twitch. Meh. I'm messing with the power supply, mate. I'm not going to read chat while I'm messing with something that's still got nearly 300 volts in it. 10 minutes out, 10 to 15 minutes after I uh, disconnected it. I'm not going to read chat. Right, let's. Let's ditch, discharge this. Using a 50k resistor. Not sure why you'd even mess around, because they cost £100. Well, they don't cost me £100. Right, that's still got 160 volts in it. It is discharging, but not as quick as I would like. I guess it would discharge faster with a 10k resistor. So I'm literally just touching this positive to negative on these caps. 70 volts, it's almost at a safe voltage, around about 50 volts is safe, but I'm going to discharge this fully. So what it's doing is it's it's discharging it by dissipating heat through the resistor. Right, that, should be a, that should be at a safe enough voltage now. 23 volts, I'm happy with that, yeah. 23 volts is fine. I will call that good. Alright. I don't know why I discharged it, because I need to check this with a thermal cam. Um, I've got a feeling... In fact, I'm going to plug it back in. I can discharge it again in a minute. Uh, I've got a feeling that the... Um, I have turned this off by my switch, by the way. I've got a switch just under here. As you can see, that light is off. So that one's for my IEC cable. I've got that connected to an IEC cable. And then this one's connected to the IEC C7. So turn that on and uh, yeah. But yeah, I want to check this under a thermal cam because the, f the main sign of this going bad, of this uh, DAP chip going bad, the DAP 053, is normally, normally it gets pretty hot if it's, if it's gone bad. So this chip here, and no, apparently not. Hang on a minute. So why, oh why does it not put out 12 volts? Nothing at all gets hot. Well, I don't think I know enough about power supplies to fault finder power supply I know that the DAP chip is, off, is often the culprit but I don't think I know enough about 
power supplies to fault find it. But we're not getting 12 volts, that's for certain. So, I guess we can possibly hunt around a little bit. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of voltage here. Just not much. Yeah, look, 0 0.37 volts. Hmm. Right. I'm not getting any signs with the thermal cam, so that is quite odd, because we usually do. Let's just have a look under the scope at those optocouplers, because sometimes they crack. No, don't seem to have had that happen. Okay. So, right, that is turned on. So the DAP chip seems, well, should be working realistically. 345 volts. And that seems a little bit low. Yeah, 345 volts seems a little low to me. Damage transformer, possibly, mate, yeah. That is possible. Uh, oh. Hello. Yes. Yes, indeed. Um, right, okay. Yeah, it looks like the transformer has, has been broken. Um, yeah, I've actually come across that a few times. So, yeah, that's... Uh, that's definitely an issue. Yeah, it's actually broken the transformer. Okay, well, yeah. Penfold nailed it. Yeah, I've come across it once before, to be honest. Um, but it wasn't actually at the top of my mind. I should have thought that it had been dropped. Right, just replace that with leaded solder. Too much of a pussy to even attempt it. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm going to discharge this again before I actually work on it. So right now we've got 337 volts on that. Just got your atom and you're in love. Yeah, they're awesome. Maybe the PS here has not been swapped. Yeah, maybe. That is possible. Maybe it was just only partially working. The problem is you can't buy those transformers either. Oh, I can take one from a donor board, but you can't buy them. Right, what we got on there now? 78 volts, yeah, I'll work on it with 78 volts, that's fine. Um, well, it's probably not fine, actually, but hey-ho. Um, I can discharge it from this side, actually. That should be more than safe enough. 22 volts, yeah, that will do me. More than happy now. Now that I know it's safe. I'm still not going to take any risks. Uh, there's one side, and the other side was broken anyway. I'm still not going to take a risk. I'm still going to be careful. Just going to desolder these. Pins left behind from the old transformer. Dang it. I was desoldering the wrong thing. <laughs> there we go. Got it. Let's get rid of those. Get rid of that. I will... Give that my brother for scrap. And let's desolder one of these from on here, shall we? I'm going to try and source these... Um, Yeah, I'm going to try and source these transformers, uh, if I can. Um, and if I can, then I'll, I'll order some in. Because it is... It's certainly not the first time, not even the second time, that I've seen those transformers break. It's because it's, it's heavy, that's the problem. Well, this one, this one is definitely safe to work on, because this donor board's been unplugged for months. Um, it's one that had far too much damage to ever be repaired, so I'm not worried about this one at all. Let me just grab some flux. Just using this cheap, quick flux. I got it free with some um, some low melt solder. 
Always wear a fume extractor, all right? And yes, I meant to say that. <laughs> Always wear a fume extractor. This is good wick. I think my fume extractor's turned itself down. Damn it. I haven't got access to the uh, the dial at the minute either. Um, the dial's behind the desk. So I haven't got immediate access to it. Hmm. Struggling to desolder this. Cheers, Cam. Get off. Thank you. It would have helped if I was using the right size tip for this, but not changing my tip now. It's too late in the day to change my tip. Can't be bothered. That would have made my life a little bit easier, though. Right, so there's a bit of excess solder on the uh, on the actual legs themselves. I'll just tin tin one of them and then push it through, and that'll hold it. There you go. Pushing up on the transformer, make sure it's solid. Make sure it's soldered properly. There we go. Beautiful. Technically, that should be job done. That should be job done. That's soldered. Turn it back on. And did we get 12 volts? Let's just zoom out. So you can see the bench supply, just there. Boom. Right, it's negative because I've got the polarity mixed up, but there we go, power supply fixed. Job done. Boom, 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 boom. I want you in my room. That power supply is done. Yeah, there we go. So, what I'll do with this is, because I replace the power supply for the customer with a new one, I will give them a part exchange fee on this one. To be honest, with the cost of parts and labour, it's going to be fairly close to the cost of a replacement power supply, uh, because you can't actually buy them transformers. And uh, that transformer was definitely broken, so... Yeah, it was at, the actual legs are broken off if you take a look. So you got one of the legs there, which is still there, um, but the legs had snapped off the windings inside the transformer. Technically, yes, it could be fixed, but you wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to fix that. Right, ladies and gents, that is the power supply fixed. Uh, whoops, don't do that while your power supply is plugged in. Just for the record, but yeah, 12 volts. There you go with the polarity the correct way. Don't copy anything you see in this video, it's for entertainment purposes only. As you've seen, they are dangerous. If you do want to safely discharge it, solder, solder a fairly high value resistor to a couple of wires and then you can use that to discharge it. Um, obviously that's just a bodge job thing, eh? but I'll do a proper job another time. Um, yeah, power supply is working, happy days. But yeah, don't copy anything you see. If you do need parts for the power supply though, I do sell them. Or if you just want to buy a power supply, I'll sell them as well. If you are watching back this video, I did live stream this on Twitch. So please check me out, twitch.tv forward slash the cold 2015. And uh, use a Twitch Prime subscription on me if you've got Amazon Prime. Link it to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber. Massively helps. And I really do appreciate it. But if you are watching back this video, thanks for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.